when you burn biomass or you let biomass decay, you are actually emitting carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, emitting a greenhouse gas. When you grow forests, you take down carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So if you want to get accurate numbers about the effects of deforestation on climate, you've got to have these biomass numbers. And that's what we will supply. When you actually look at the amount of information we've really got about forest biomass, effectively, in the tropics, there isn't any. They're remote, they're a nightmare to access. So the right place to look is some space. The biomass mission is designed around radar wavelength. Now, it turns out the wave you want is about 70 centimetres. It's sort of the Goldilocks wavelength. If it's too short, it doesn't get into the forest, it scatters off leaves and twigs. If you don't make it long enough, it doesn't penetrate enough you've got to get it through the ionosphere. So that's why the biomass mission is designed around this wavelength. From space, we're going to measure how much wood is in forests. When it looks at a forest, it sees right through the, the leaves. and the, So that as far as the radar is concerned, there are no leaves. It's just these bare bones of a tree. And that's where all the biomass is. The mission is being flown by a European Space Agency. And the reason why European Space Agency selected it was because it can measure biomass in the dense tropical forests. Our whole scientific objective is that, and then relating that to the effects on carbon cycle and climate. So first use of systematic measurements of height from radar, using this, this technique for that, and it's the absolute first for tomography. So everything about it is innovative. I've been working with a very talented, multidisciplinary, multi-institution group of people. When people are doing something that's important, they need to understand how they relate to other people doing the important bits. So my job that I learned through the, through the NERC funding and running the centre was how to translate. That's exactly what I needed to run the mission advisory group for, for biomass. Because again, this is a bunch of super smart people. Getting the biomass mission accepted is one thing, but then someone's got to build this, this instrument. I'm pleased to say that in 2016, Airbus UK was successful in winning the contract for this, for which they'll gain 192 million pounds. And they're building it as of now. And we're helping them to make sure it works. <laughs>